What's up everybody, this is Adam with Reese Customs. And in today's video, we're gonna be 3D printing a part for an old tractor. So using some new technology to fix some old technology. So, first off, in my last video, we was doing a giveaway, uh, and that giveaway will start, or will complete when we hit uh, 500 subscribers. Haven't quite hit that yet, but I wanted to put out another video, so we're gonna do this, and then maybe by the next video, we'll have an announce, uh, announcement for the winner. So. Let's uh, walk over to the tractor first and see what we're talking about. So, it's bright and warm out today. Hopefully this isn't shaking too much. I'm getting a gimbal. Uh, gimbal should be in Monday. So the next video, we'll have a gimbal. This is just on a little stick tripod thing. It's very shaky. So, here's the tractor. I'm gonna spin the camera around and let's look at the tractor and see what we got what we're working with all right there it is the old international 504 picked this up uh, not too long ago I'm using it to try to level out a spot here for a swim pool so what's the issue right here this little cap right here is where you put the hydraulic fluid in now it's got this little plug in it and they've got like a cotter pin in there and this needs to be open for pressure so uh, air can escape when pressure builds up so I can't seal it but the issue is when it rains water gets in there and it gets all in the hydraulic fluid and makes a mess so what we're gonna do is we're gonna design and 3d print a cap to just go over that and keep water out of it handy dandy Harbor Freight calipers let's zero them out and then this takes like an inch and an eighth uh, so it's 1.165, so it's bigger than inch and eight. 1.152, I don't know if you can see that because the sun. Let's make sure it's zero, yep. Zero. All right, so we got 1.158. Height wise, we want it about, I don't know, about that high. So, it's 1.3, we'll just say inch and a half. So, let's uh, get out of this sun, because it's hot and bright. Let's head inside and uh, design this thing in Fusion. See you inside. Okay, so while this is going through uh, the design process, I'm not the best in uh, Fusion, so I'll just let you watch it, watch what I did. So, I made a big error here and I did not catch it at all I was totally oblivious to it uh, until the end and so what I actually did uh, you remember from the first part of the video we measured the nut on the tractor and it was 1.15 inches uh, across well by the time I got inside and uh, made lunch for the kids and everything else and started designing in my head I was thinking 1.51 so yeah um i designed that to be uh like 1.6 from flat to flat completely oblivious i was thinking oh yeah i've got plenty of room here it's gonna you know the 3d print's gonna shrink a little bit so this ought to fit real snug and then i'll put this nut and bolt through here and uh yeah and i totally didn't even catch it until like I had to go out there. I was thinking like, okay, it looks kind of big or whatever, but you know, I was thinking it's supposed to be that big. It's supposed to be an inch and a half. I don't know. I don't know. It's just dyslexia or something, but you can see here. I even, uh, second guessed, I measured, saw the sizes and was like, well, wait a minute. We need to adjust the size to get it what we need it because, uh, when you draw the hexagon shape, it goes off of uh, radius as opposed to when you make a circle or something like that, it does the diameter. Uh, so I got a little confused on that. It's been a, a while since I used Fusion, but yeah. So uh, I got the part made. I just had the main, most important dimension wrong. But hey, it happens. And it actually turned out working in the end, so no big deal. But uh, after you get the design how you want it, basically uh, from Fusion, you just export it as an STL, which I will do here shortly. And... Uh, I was happy with it 
selected the whole body, export as a STL, and then I'll use Cura uh, to slice it and send it to the 3D printer. So this is Cura here, and it brings the file in, shows you the model, you position it how you want it, set your settings for your 3D printer, your filament, and I had this one, uh, it didn't need to be super detailed, I wanted it to print quicker, so export it out and send it to the 3d printer and this is a Creality Ender 3 I've got the glass bed on there highly recommend that um, this is a time lapse and this footage is sped up so it took about four a little over four hours total to do everything so uh, that's it all right so the print is done this is the cap I've got the hole for the screw here which is not threaded, it's just kind of tight, but it threads good. Um, and then I have the area for the hex nut inside of there. So it's a little small. The hole is a little bit smaller than the nut. So what we're gonna do is use a soldering iron and heat it up and melt it down in there. That is in there. Now we can use this as a set screw so when we put it down on the cap on the tractor we just screw this in and hold it in place. Let's go do that now. All right we're back. Parts printed and because we're in Georgia uh, it rained like it usually does during the summer. Hot in the morning and then rain on us. So we're a little late with getting this piece on there. Um, I gotta change the fluid in the tractor anyways. But, we're gonna put it on now and hopefully it fits and it's a good proof of concept. Whether or not it'll last with the sun and everything, I don't know, we'll see. But, uh, let's give it a shot. Spin you around to the tractor. All right, here we go. Let's see. That's uh, rather large. What happened? There we go. It's waterproof. But I will say something in my design came out wrong because this an infusion is supposed to be this you see that water on there this is supposed to be the size of this but for some reason it's way off and it was probably something I'm sure it was something I did but the bright side is it fits around the base so it'll work just the same well need a screwdriver but there it is, it's covered. I don't know how long it'll hold up, but it's covered and it is now keeping water from entering into the tractor. So we did it. We successfully used 3D printing to repair a tractor from 1962, something like that. Um, there it is, it's fixed. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button. And hopefully by the next video, we'll be at our 500 subscribers and we'll finish our giveaway. Uh, again, check out the last video. Uh, leave a comment to enter. That's all you got to do. And uh, we'll see you next time. Have a good one.